Good morning, Idaho. Hope you're having a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on when you're listening to this. Welcome to the Local Yokel Idaho podcast, where we talk about what is going on in the wonderful state of Idaho. Well, as a transplant to Idaho myself, this next story is one that piques my interest. This is Idaho's Newcomers, a Republican Majority. This comes from KTVB7 by Joe Paris. So diving into a topic that's been a hot conversation among Idahoans for years, the influx of -of out-of-state voters moving to Idaho, particularly from states like California, and the effect they're having in the state of Idaho. Newly released voter registration data from the Idaho Secretary of State's office, however, paints a different picture than what many Idahoans have been saying for years. Of the nearly 119,000 current Idaho voters who moved from another state, a strong majority registered as Republicans after settling in Idaho. California, often seen as a liberal stronghold, has sent the most people to Idaho over the years, with almost 40,000 current voters coming from the Golden State. Surprisingly, though, 75% of this group registered as Republican voters once they established residency in Idaho. This trend holds true across the board with 48 out of 49 states, Vermont being the exception contributing a majority block of Republican voters to Idaho. Overall, 65% of new Idaho voters from other states registered with the GOP. Dr. Jeff Lyons, lead of the Boise State Political Science Program, confirms that this data aligns with their survey data. However, it's important to note that the data comes with some caveats. The voter registration counts only track adults who actively registered after moving to Idaho and don't account for people who chose not to disclose their previous out-of-state address. Which, before we hit the record button here, me and John were kind of teasing that we definitely had some interesting thoughts on this, and I most certainly do because as a Born and raised Idaho, and I can't tell you how many times I've heard those Californians, they're the ones to blame for changing things or something thereof. <laughs> yeah, so it's interesting, and it's a conversation I've had with several people. And, and one of the thoughts is more of a shift in values. So at some point, we talked about the, the, the Overton window, when it shifts. So the Overton window being the, I guess, the, the realm of things that are seen as normal, right? From from far left to far right, you go too far outside and, and you're crazy either way. So the Overton window kind of shifts left and right as, as, the, as the group of people changes. Well, so in California, seemingly, and this is just, this is just me thinking out loud, but in, in California, it seems that the Overton window is further to the left, which means that people that are to the left in California are further to the left than people that are to the left here in Idaho, at least generally speaking. But it also means that people that are on the right or are typically aligned with the GOP tend to be further left than those who are in Idaho. And so people moving here from very liberal states, they might be registering as Republicans, but their values might still be reflecting kind of what they're moving away from. And that's not true for all cases, because I know several people from California who don't think that way. But I do know that that the you know, that the majority of Californians that or at least the Overton window in California has shifted left. And it's the same in Colorado. It's the same in New Mexico. It's the same in Virginia. It's it's the same in so many places where, yeah, we might be getting GOP voters, Republican or GOP doesn't necessarily mean traditional conservative. And, and so that's where I find these these statistics interesting, but also they're only painting a part of the picture. Right, right. Which, you know, an interesting thing I would throw your wage on and interesting to get your kind of perspective after you kind of have that one, which is, you know, and I think most people who listen to the show know, I... I regularly try to make sure to go to a lot of the different political events that are going on in the Treasure Valley. When you go and you go to different events or just if you watch the legislature, if you look at the people who are consistently regularly passing really conservative laws. So if we're talking about that, we're talking about like pro-life, anti-LGBTQ curriculum in schools and in the medical field, right? You're looking towards funding towards maybe more Christian or Christian 
Christian Judeo type of policies with that kind of background in mind being passed, right? That That's kind of that more, what would I call it? That more traditional conservative that you've seen throughout the rest of American history. A lot of those people are either recent transplants or people that came from out of state at some point or at least left and then came back. And when you go to a lot of different meetings and stuff, most of the people that are pushing for those really conservative values generally not all the time, are all out-of-staters, especially Californians that have come with a fire and passion to be like, I, I knew what I came from, and I don't want that again, and so I'm getting involved now so that I can get ahead of the ball. I'm not saying that's the case for all of them, but then on the flip side, if you're talking about those that are kind of getting in the way of certain policies, the senators that are voting against abortion banning laws, the senators that are voting against bills that would get rid of, you know, transgender stuff in public or yada yada, a lot of those are locals that were born and raised here a lot of the time. Not all the time. I'm not saying universally, but generally in my experience and observation, that's what occurs. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that makes sense to me. I, I will say it's interesting looking through the the data. So so in the article and then in the we'll have it posted in the document that goes along with the podcast. With the show notes. Yeah, in the show notes. Thank you. There are there are two links. One to the story, the story from KTVB seven. The other one is to an Idaho.gov site where it actually shows a map of the states. And it's interesting to see where people are moving from and and what people are moving from where are registering as what. Yeah, this is the kind of the Idaho Secretary of States. They made a kind of visual chart of all this for the report that came out here recently. And that's what prompted the article and everything, which you can go and you can hover over each state and then it'll give you, you know, the percentage of Republican, Democrat, unaffiliated and other that came from that state to Idaho, including the number. And then if you want to click on that state. And then you can even get a map by like county. So in this way, you can actually even see, you know, which counties, what areas of California, the most amount of people are coming from on the on those maps. Yeah. And so it's interesting kind of looking through it at various places I've lived, who's coming from where and how are they registering? Although, all right, now I have I have some I am upset now with the Secretary of State's website. Oh, no. <laughs> because I moved from Winchester, Virginia, and I'm almost positive that I'm a registered Republican voter here in the state. But their data only has two Democrats and four unaffiliated. So I don't know which one of those I am and which one's my wife, but uh, my wife is one of the unaffiliateds, and I guess I didn't move here. So... <laughs> I wonder when the calming data for this came out or when it was added. I don't know. Because, you know, the speed at which government moves. Right. But yeah, that, that makes me laugh because I, I apparently don't live here. Also, it's funny if you go over here. I'm, I'm, we're just messing with it live here for you guys. So fully genuine reaction. If you go over to Portland, Oregon, it's 46% from Portland, Oregon. We're Republican. So that's 400 people from Portland to Idaho with 263 being Democrat, 253 being unaffiliated and 1% other. And Well, it would be interesting to be able if if as you zoomed out, if they actually lumped places together. Because it would be interesting just to see the overall numbers of the Portland metropolitan area, you know, taking into account Portland and Beaverton and and all of those other places. I don't know them, so I'm not going to name them all because that would be dumb of me. But, you know, it, it would be it would be interesting. So the, the I think the I think the bigger story here is less about Idaho and more about these places. Because the story that I see that's being told here is that Republicans in droves are leaving these places. So, like, that's that's the big story that I'm seeing. Well, with Republicans voting with their feet, that in the past it was like, well, you know, I don't like that California is liberal and all the laws and stuff, but my family's here and we've been here for three or four generations or whatever. And we really, you know, the history, which there's a certain amount of importance to that. And I don't deny that that shouldn't be taken lightly. I think some people, don't think that is, but I, I really do. But then they're finally saying, no, enough is enough. No, even as much as, you know, maybe we've been in California, maybe we've been in Oregon, or maybe we've been in Washington, you know, the, the close states to speak of, right? But no, it's too far now. We're going to vote with our where we live. We're moving to the nearest really conservative bastion. Well, then Idaho's great. You can go to Idaho. If you've got family still there in California, you can visit. It's not a horrible drive. It's the perfect kind of bastion for Republicans that want to still stay out West, but move to a state that more better aligns with their ideas. Yeah. I can't tell you how many, how many people I've talked to who have moved from California and their first, 
you know, you ask them where they're from, and they're like, well, I'm from California, <laughs> but I'm not one of those. I've never met a met someone from California who's like, yeah, I'm from California, and I'm one of those. That, like, proudly, like, here's my badge. It says California right there on big letters, okay? Don't you forget. <laughs> but anyway, I, the, the bigger story, I think, is the national story about who's moving from where and who's, like you said, voting with their feet. We're seeing or we're seeing Republicans or conservatives in this at this point. We're we're doing a lot of voting with our feet and our dollars. And it's it's starting to have an effect on any number of things, from Budweiser to Twitter to Disney. And it's it's fun to see it's fun to see change. We'll we'll see what happens, but but it's it's interesting to see. Right. For someone, you know, there there are always people, I feel like in certain decades and ages that sit there and say, you know, oh, if I can only go back to that decade or that, you know, age or whatever, that was exciting. There were things happening. I, I think a lot of people are going to look back a bit at these years, especially after COVID. And I would say just about Trump time, as much as some people might not want to call it that, but, you know, 2016 and be like, yeah, a lot happened. I, I lived through a lot of history right there because there, there are a lot of things. There's a lot of shaking up, changing of norms that are occurring both in Idaho and the U.S. broadly. 